This video shows how to change the fail action of a Valtech rotary valve. In this case, we will be changing a fail closed valve to a fail open configuration. Note, Valtech rotary actuators do not require the spring configuration or any other internal changes to be made. Begin by removing any accessories, including positioners and tubing. Loosen both of the jam nuts on the stop bolts and back the stop bolts out three to four turns each. Remove the indicator plate from the end of the spline lever. This will be reinstalled later in the process. Next, remove the four cover plate bolts and remove the cover plate. Loosen, but do not remove, the locking mechanism on the spline lever. This bolt only needs to be loosened two to three turns. The locking mechanism is spring-loaded and should raise as the bolt is loosened. Next, remove the yoke to body bolting. Once the body bolting is removed, pull the body subassembly out of the actuator. Note, it is important to identify the orientation of the accessory mounting holes on the yoke to ensure it goes back in the same way when reinstalling. Remove the four bolts that connect the yoke to the transfer case and remove the yoke. Install the yoke on the opposite side of the actuator from where it was earlier mounted. Apply anti-seize compound to the four bolts and tighten them. Manually rotate the valve to the desired fail position. It is critical that the splines are oriented with the valve approximately 90 degrees open for fail open configurations or centered in the seat for fail closed configurations. Failure to do so may affect the stroking range and shut off of the valve and can potentially cause damage to the internal components of the valve. Next, slide the body sub onto the actuator. Apply anti-seize to the body bolting and reinstall the yoke to body bolting. In preparation for tightening down the locking mechanism, it is critical to understand how to verify the locking mechanism is installed correctly. The locking mechanism is spring-loaded, has a radius cutout to fully engage with the spline. If this is not oriented correctly, it is possible to damage the spline beyond repair, and the shaft will be difficult to remove or install in the spline lever. Next, tap the spline lever towards the body. To make sure that the locking mechanism is oriented correctly, push down on the locking mechanism while verifying it slips into the radius. Then tighten the bolt while ensuring the locking mechanism stays oriented correctly. Apply a regulated air source to the bottom port of the actuator in order to lift the actuator stem off the stop bolt and reinstall the cover plate with the zero facing the seat of the body. Apply anti-seize to the cover plate bolting and reinstall. Now, adjust the stops to ensure that you have a full 90 degree rotation and acceptable shutoff per your application. Then tighten the jam nuts. Note, 
It is recommended to adjust the rotation by verifying the rotation of the closure member. This may be the ball, the disc, or the plug depending on your valve type. Install the indicator plate so that it represents the actual position of the valve. Note, if the screw holes have not been previously tapped, use a number 38 drill bit to open the hole, then screw in the self-tapping screws. The picture above shows the orientation of the actual ball matching the indicator plate that has just been installed. For more information on this or other products, please contact your FlowServe representative.